Oh dear, we have been hacked. You know that fear? Someone got into your email or your Insta or your bank account or your social security or insurance or whatever. And then the guys from Nigeria succeeded in getting in, resetting all your passwords, getting into all your social media account, stealing your identity, as I say. Just recently, someone mentioned to me they had that happening. I mean, actually, he was lucky, not so bad. But no, someone got in there. Is that a realistic? Can you relate to that? However, even if you get hacked by the hackers and they get into all your accounts, it's actually a comparatively minor thing against the real hacking because our mind has been hacked by Mara. Our mind has been hacked by Mara. He got in there. And once they are in, they can do whatever they like. And they can uh, they use your identity in a nefarious ways and uh, impersonate you and ask people who are your friends, contacting them under your name and asking them for money and whatnot. But this is what happens you know, once Mawa hacks our mind and then uh, the defilements are coming in. And then anger, hatred, delusion, desire, passion, lust, conceit, laziness, stubbornness, and so on. The endless list of kilesas is taking effect. So what do you do? If you try to log in into your email, or you try to log into your Insta or something and you can't even get in. And then you have friends starting to call you. What's going on? Uh, I mean, I'm quite happy to help you, but a thousand dollars, you really need them urgently. Now the scammer's already in and now contacting your friends. Now what, what do you do? Do you just say, oh, never mind, and you just have a good nap and watch a movie to distract yourself, or what is your approach when that happens? Looks like you haven't been hacked, no? <laughs> I mean, externally in your accounts. Now, obviously, you will immediately want to uh, close that down, contact uh, uh, your email provider, uh, reset all your passwords where they're not yet been in, you try to uh, eliminate that, you try to get that out, you try to uh, stop that, you try to contact them. But these accounts are getting closed down and so on, you immediately start doing something. So how about when our mind is hacked by Mava? Is it a good idea to just keep him doing whatever he likes to do there in our mind? whatever anger and delusion and hatred and desire and passion is telling us. Now, there should be an immediate effort to uh, prevent that access, to get them out again, to make that secure and safe again. Now, that is a job now, in uh, meditation. Now, first of all, now, we have to acknowledge that this uh, worst case scenario that someone got in there has actually happened. That's the first thing. The delusion usually convinces us it's all okay and my mind and, and I, I can, I've got full control there. We just had our meditation session. Do you feel you still have control over that account? <laughs> or does it appear that it has been hacked and some uh, nefarious forces are directing your mind here and there. You want your mind to stay with the breath. You want your mind to think thoughts of loving kindness. 
But the mind starts thinking thought of uh, anger and hatred or thoughts of irritation or distraction or desire and passion. You want the mind to stay quiet with the breath. Instead it's thinking the crazy. Uh, the reason it's been hacked by Mara, by the defilement. And so we have to make an effort and then we have to secure the mind. I'm not sure whether you already had your hacking experience. No, you had just a password. No, password. <laughs> if you operate, no, your password is just password. No, it's not so surprising if you get hacked. But after you've been through that experience, will you still use just password as password? We will make an effort no, to have a more secure one. So once we have noticed, you know, for example, in meditation, and even if you don't end up you know, in samadhi and bliss and inside awakening nibbana, but you had you know, a difficult session you know, where the mind was unruly, you know, that can be still a valuable insight. You know, the insight I have been hacked by Mava he has got on very deeply there. It's not just some a minor spammy email I use no, just for spammy stuff no, but he got deep into your uh, hardware no, like all these vulnerabilities no, and some of that is never really deep already in the processor into the processor that thing already has ways no, they can get in there so similar, and it is very deep in our mind, it's a very deep hack. Where your hardware is even, so to speak, like uh, affected. So we have to make a uh, real good effort and secure our mind. And one way of securing the mind is uh, by keeping precepts. There's one access. And when we break precepts, then Mava really gets deep into our mind. When there are limitations now of these simile, obviously computer hacking and Mama is a little bit different as you can't 100% compare that. Now, even if we keep precepts, that doesn't mean that Mama has no access anymore, but uh, it means he can't get too badly in. He only can uh, catch you in a, in a less severe way. Another thing is the practicing uh, generosity, making punya. The more punya we make, you know, the more wholesome mind states we develop because making good karma uh, uh, implies the wholesome mind states, good actions. And again, it will weaken him, can't get full access. And another one very important is sense restraint. Indri Yesu Kutta Dvara, Indriya Sangvara, the restraint of the senses, guarding the doors of the senses. If you have got an air gapped computer, have you heard that term? It never connects to the internet in any way. It doesn't even have a chip that it can do Wi Fi or mobile. You never connect it uh, to a router. It's completely, you know, there's a gap of air. It's nothing. Can they hack that computer? And maybe if they break into your home no, and then physically work on it, but no one could get in from the internet or from Nigeria or anything. It's a very secure thing. No, but the moment you go onto the internet, anything that connects to the internet in any way, no, you open yourself up to hacking. Unfortunately, our mind is constantly, <laughs> constantly connecting. They have got these ports. I'm not sure how much of a, a computer geeks you are, but there's a different ports uh, when you connect to the internet. So similar with your mind, you have got you know, the one port is the eye, another port is the ear, nose, tongue. 
body these sensations and then the mind the mind is not really the most dangerous spot anything can get in there so wide open with the other five you can already hide very well if you stay in a place like Dhammagibi so much of the hacking through senses one to five eye to body it can't really happen so much if you're in a, in a peaceful, quiet, monastic environment in nature. But that one port is still open to the mind. So we have to really protect that. And you know, like you have filters or firewalls, so you have to install in a firewall in the mind. Now the foremost do you know the foremost monk disciples in protecting the doors of the senses? Who was that? It was a half brother of the Buddha, beautiful Nanda, a real handsome, hunky young man. And uh, additionally, he was also quite fond of making himself beautiful. In fact, we got the rule that we can't use makeup, we can't put eye shades in carillion as monks, and that rule was instituted because <laughs> Nanda, Nanda was doing that. We also have a rule that we shouldn't iron our robes, and it's not necessary to have perfectly. Again, that was Venerable Nanda doing that. He wasn't really keen on ordaining because he was already engaged with the most beautiful girl in the country because he was so handsome and a prince. Uh, the Buddha recognized uh, that he has the potential to become enlightened in this life. He has got the power of me. But once he is now with that girl, it will be much more difficult. So he used the opportunity when he was in the palace of his father invited for the meal and back to the monastery and he gave his bowl to his the younger half-brother Nanda to carry for him. So in the opposite Nanda having the bowl he had to walk after the Buddha and the Buddha goes to the monastery. So he was already carrying the bowl of the Buddha and he was already in the monastery and before before he knew really what's happening, he ended up being ordained. However, on the way to the monastery, the beautiful fiancé had left him a last kind of message, and I, I am here for you, I am in love for you forever, and please come back soon. And when he then uh, lived the holy life, and it was very difficult for him, and it was very distractive for his mind, to the extent that he was getting close to disrobing from uh, discontent and hankering after his ex-fiancé. The Buddha helped him, the Buddha gave him good advice. And what Vendabhananda really took on was uh, guarding the doors of the senses and he became the foremost in that. And this is how he could overcome that desire and that discontent because he wouldn't allow access to Mara anymore. He had installed a really good firewall in his mind that uh, all these external influences can't get in. Just like when you have a firewall and they can't get in from the internet anymore. And before he would look somewhere, he would mindfully contemplate, if I see that, will that lead to any unwholesome states of desire or aversion to arise? If you go to that website, if you watch that video, if you look at these images, could any unwholesome states of greed, desire or aversion arise in your mind? If you come to the conclusion, uh, yes, that is probably quite likely, then you don't go to that website, you don't look at these images, you don't look at these tweets, you don't watch that video. And 
for example, you may have noticed and if you watch a lot about the present war in Gaza, going through all the tweets, the hashtag Gaza genocide, hashtag uh, Gaza, hashtag war in Gaza and so on. And you watch these tweets or you watch the television coverage. Do you feel that it usually leads to an increase in wholesome states in your mind? Do you feel calm and tranquil? Do you feel mindful and uh, like radiating loving kindness? Not quite, ne? The more typical thing is ne, anger, irritation, or also in the depression, frustration, feelings of hopelessness. Are these also mind states? Feeling hopeless? Feeling depressed? Is that also? Is that beneficial? No, no, of course not. So we have to be careful. No? Use it like when a Bananda. If I'm going to watch that, if I see these images, if I see that video, if I follow the news, and, uh, sometimes I have these in the live, everything, the last thing that happens, and you can watch that all day if you want. But uh, contemplate, and not, what will it do to your mind? Of course, no, once you are uh, really upset and frustrated, then you may go in the other direction. You may go websites which go the other direction and cause uh, desire and lust and passion and so on to arise. Again, is that wholesome? Is that beneficial? So if we understand, if I go to that kind of content, that may happen, then one doesn't go there. It's the same for all senses the sound. If I listen to that, will it cause the irritation and desire to arise? If so, then don't listen to that. If you listen to a Dhamma talk of Lumpur Liam, Lumpur Sumedho, Lumpur Tongdeng, is it very likely that unwholesome states of anger and hatred and desire and lust are going to arise after, from that? Is it maybe possible that mind states of uh, faith and mindfulness and calm and tranquility and insight and understanding may arise when you listen to that? So what do you do? How about listening to it? No? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a senseless thing. You evaluate. If I listen to that, what's going to happen? If bad stuff is coming up in the mind, if you anticipate bad stuff is coming up, don't listen. If it's fairly obvious no, that wholesome mind states are quite likely to rise from that, no, then go for it. The same with uh, smells, tastes, and then all these you know, very strong the bodily feelings, bodily sensations. And of course, the most tricky is the mind. You know, that is really very quick. You have to be a very, very smart bouncer. It can be a tough job you know, being a bouncer in a very fashionable nightclub and all these people desperate to come in. Like in, in Berlin, they had this uh, Berkheim, pe people waiting there. And, uh, I think you have to start queuing and maybe queuing for 10 hours. And then the bouncer one look and they <laughs> can try next day. Some people are flying in from faraway countries. <laughs> for then just... Anyway, you know, this is the kind of bouncer you want to install in your mind. You've got to be in a quite ruthless. And when these unwholesome thoughts try to sneak in, these 
memories of old hurt and trauma where you know you get so upset or depressed. You have to be like this really tough bouncer, tough luck. Just one look. Oh, that guy he looks just like a tourist. Just one look. Now this this thought, this memory, and I will just get upset again. I will just get frustrated again. Hope you don't go there. Usually you don't know that it's until it's too late. Yeah, this is not the right bouncer. That bouncer needs a little bit more training. A good bouncer is already looking, uh, not just the person in front of him, he looks already in the crowd there and how they behave. If you really want to get in there, you know that, and you know how you behave, and you're waiting in the crowd already a hundred meters away from the bouncer. So there's a battle in between both sides. Namawa is also smart, and you have to be smarter. You have to have very sharp mindfulness. You have to be quick. Yeah. The mind is more difficult. However, now the mind is usually uh, very strongly connected with the five senses. And if you protect the five senses very consistently, you will notice that the mind is already uh, uh, getting easier as well. Because a lot of this stuff that comes in through the mind and it's just like a reflection and a memory what beforehand it came through the senses. Or sometimes also what we in future hope to get in through the senses. So it's connected. And if you have a very good uh, restraint of the five physical senses for a longer period, you will find that the mind is also more protected and gets easier. And you're also training. This is just like some uh, village disco and you're doing some working as a bouncer there. It's not so difficult. You may have to invite people because no one no wants to go there. So, so you, you train there. You train there and with the uh, easier ones. And this is how you develop the quickness which you said you find still lacking. It's slower in the five senses. It's easier to do. And this is how you train the bouncer. Yeah. Have you already opened for questions? Any other comments? Anyone still in denial that you're being hacked? When the Subo once told me that uh, he was living in, he's a computer geek kind of person, he's a professional, and in Tessawan, and their website got hacked. And when he told them that they were all not, they were the opposite, and the monks they had no clue about computers, and they just didn't want to believe him. <laughs> For a while, and they just kind of denied it till it became the too obvious that the website actually, yes, it actually is hacked. Anyone still in denial? Do you believe that no, no, Mawa hasn't got my mind? This is very dangerous if you're hacked and you're in denial. Gummy. Strengthens the. The firewall, yeah, you can, this also meditation can be like an antivirus. You can have these antivirus programs which are scanning your whole computer and then identify uh, dangerous files and then can delete them. I would compare the firewall is more like a sense restraint and precepts and the uh, meditation is more like uh, running a really good antivirus. And it goes through all the files and it identifies which ones are dangerous. Yeah, the bouncer is again more like, um, it's also on the simpler level, the more like sense restraint and mindfulness and, and effort. And this uh, antivirus program is more like you know, really going deep in, in your meditation. The samadhi means that you can actually get access you know, to all these system files, which most people they don't, don't ever even look at, or which you can't even get in in Android, you don't have access to that. Once you have Samadhi, you, know, you get actually access, it's like Linux or having a booted phone. You can go in the wide into the files, you can even go into the firmware, you can maybe even go into the hardware very deep, the deeper the Samadhi. 
and then identifying what is a virus and deleting it. Now that is a drop of uh, wisdom and insight. Seeing things as they truly are. Now you get the flag. Now this is a virus program. This is a Trojan. And then the power of insight and wisdom and being able to delete that. And then the mind is cleared and freed from that. Yeah. Is that calm abiding or is that something different? Samadhi is that? Is that calm abiding or is that something different? Yeah, calm abiding may be a translation. However, if someone uh, just goes from the English term calm abiding, that can be many things. And I can listen to some very calm, peaceful music. There's a calm abiding or if I'm just crashing out in my bed. Uh, many people may call that a calm abiding as well. But not, both have nothing to do with samadhi. There's a very uh, unique form of calm where you have uh, rapture and bliss in particular and super sharp mindfulness. So uh, often we associate the calm with sleeping or blanking out. But samadhi is being extremely calm, totally tranquil by body and mind. But at the same time, absolutely alert and more bright and awake than normal. Mm -hmm. Like a triple shot espresso, but at the same time totally calm, which seems a contradiction in turn. You have that brightness and that sharpness of mind from the triple espresso, but at the same time you have the calm and tranquility, like listening to the most beautiful, super calm music without sleeping. Or, yeah. One can also become invisible for Mara. One can trick him and become invisible for him, so that one is not in his range anymore. <laughs> now that is uh, the definition of, of uh, Nasamadi. Now once you have Samadhi, and, uh, you have gone beyond the uh, range of Mawa. You can still get you and come out again, and uh, some of the deep defilements are not yet eliminated, only suppressed. So you can maybe compare uh, Samadhi having the air gapped computer, where you have no more access to the internet at all. And then it's obviously easier. And so if you have the computer now completely isolated, air gapped, and no attacks from the internet can occur anymore. No one from the internet can get in there. That obviously means now you can really go in with your antivirus scan and really work on that thing and fully remove any kind of viruses and any kind of infection there. So I think maybe one can compare that one. Samadhi means that Mava really can't see you anymore. Can't get in at all. All the ports are closed even the mental one. This is the only one how you really get a handle on the mind. Until your mind has developed a real samadhi, uh, you, you can never be a perfect bouncer on the mind gate. It's not possible. That is maybe an important addition to your question. So don't feel despondent or think that you're de deficient there. Uh, unless a person has samadhi, you cannot have perfect sense restraint on the mind gate. Because as you said, it's too quick. It's too quick and it's too sneaky and too subtle and so on. The only way you know, of really securing the mind gate even from access that Mava can't see you anymore, he can't get in, and there's actually Samadhi. Only then that will be possible. Yeah. Exactly. That will make it already uh, weaker, the attacks on the mind, and that also gives you the training to get better. And also with training, the, the five external senses will help you greatly in it to deepen the samadhi. And so they all start uh, working together and synergetically in uh, supporting each other. Mm. Yes, Miriam. Good to see you again. Are you okay? I haven't seen you a while. Great. Thank you. 
mind and not be very dangerous. Exactly, yeah, yeah, but that's the same with hackers, it's not easy. The gentleman who recently talked to me, that they were already in his email and doing things, but they would delete that all. And he would even get some uh, warnings from one of his programs, but the hacker were on the email and they would immediately delete these emails. So it's a quite a good, good simile. It's not, not necessarily uh, obvious that you're hacked, because they may not want you to know so that they can uh, discover everything. And uh, you're completely right, and that's the same as Mawa. And he's hiding that. You have to be very careful. You know, the Ma Mawa may even pretend that he's a Buddha, or that he is a Dhamma, or that he is something good and wholesome. Don't think of Mawa you know, like good old devil smelling of sulfur and having a clump foot and black or something. He, he comes you know, like, like a dressman, like a model, like a sneak banker. Yeah, yeah, very, very deceptive. He works with deception. Totally correct. For example, when we get angry or upset about something, and then normally the Mara can feed the mind with all the negative food, and the anger and it just stay there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love we are love about it. For sure, and that's uh, what Mara says, and it's not you're angry, you're just teaching them a lesson. They need a good lesson. And you're doing that as a good service to mankind, teaching these evil guys a good lesson. This is what Mava does. By hiding that, pretending this is not anger, but this is not something good. Fighting evil. Can't fight evil by being angry. You know, anger is evil already. We can fight anger only by non-anger. But Mava will try to convince you otherwise.